Okay, so um, we're coming to the final part of this presentation, um, and uh, I'd just like to go through one last uh, version of society which is not covered in Frisbee and Sayer, but which I'd like to just suggest to you as a kind of an introduction to a different idea about society. This idea is basically an idea that sees society as a set of fun functionally differentiated subsystems. In other words, society is composed of communications and only communications. These occur between individuals and social systems. Um, now, social systems are effectively communication systems. They enable us to talk and to uh, solve our problems. Um, and as you can see from this diagram, they are uh, autopoetic uh, interactions and organizations. So there are three types of social system in his theory, in Lumen's approach. An autopoetic system is a system that is defined as something that reproduces itself. So, for example, the economy. It reproduces itself because every month we need to buy consumer goods. You have to buy bread, food, you've got to buy electricity, you've got to buy things which have to be replaced. And because you need to replace them, you have to keep buying them. In other words, the economy reproduces itself, and that is its autopoetic function. It, re it keeps itself going. Interactions are much simpler. Um, they are based on time-limited, face-to-face interactions. So you, for example, you've got an encounter with a doctor, an encounter with a dentist, and so on. And then finally, there are organizations which are usually performed uh, hierarchies, uh, and they are um, always uh, seen to be, um, uh, you know, like rule bound. So, for example, you've got like a university, which is a hierarchical organization. Okay, so let's just take a little bit closer look at, at these uh, systems. Um, the idea in Lumen's theory is that historically society has gradually separated into separate specialist spheres, spheres of communication. So over time, the economy, uh, education, law, all separated from religion. Now, it, you know, in the in the previous medieval times, religion was really dominant. It dominated every every other way of thinking in society. But now we have a a, a society which has almost autonomous systems, uh, specialist realities, as it were. So what you've got to think of here is that there are these multiple realities that don't really connect with each other anymore. I mean, they can, you know, the economic system can uh, shake up uh, law, especially if things become overly expensive, and art can have a monetary value. But the truth is that the, the economy processes its own solutions, its own problem in, it, in its own way. So in other words, these are problem systems that require uh, solutions um, and that are kind of worked on. Uh, we, need to, we need ways to decide when something's le legal or illegal. Now the thing about these systems is that they're, they don't, they're not people. They exist, as it were, between people. So for example, in this little example, uh, you have a judge, and as soon as the judge makes a, a decision about the, whether someone's guilty or not, or when he consigns that person or makes a judgment about uh, the prison sentence, the legal system emerges at that moment, and then it disappears. So the systems are persistent, but they're not real. They're not real in the sense that they are not like tables, chairs, and so on, that persist whenever the people are not interacting. The systems pulse in and out of existence at moments when uh, specific communication, such as a legal communication, occurs. Okay, so this is a wholly different view of society and something that I think that you know about. Okay, so let's just uh, for our conclusion now uh, to the issue of society and uh, and sociology. The suggestion is that uh, you, by knowing more about society as a concept, you can see that society can exist over and above people and populations. In other words, 
society can act as a set of rules if we take in Durkheim's idea. And these rules can constrain people in important ways. They can be positive, they can be negative, uh, they could make health, healthy uh, eating better or easier, but they could also make things harder. Public health practice could look at these overarching concepts, could look at the rules that govern in society, and it could try to change some of those. And in many ways, if you think about some of the best examples of public health interventions which have had a huge impact on population health, perhaps that's what public health was actually doing. It was changing the overarching rules rather than telling people what, telling people how to live or forcing people to live in a particular way, society just, or public health, interacted with those overarching rules to change them in some way. Think about uh, your examples that you have in your own mind of what public health might do. Uh, think about uh, smoking campaigns. Do they change the rules around smoking? Do they change the way in which smoking is interpreted by the population? Now, the other thing I would like to point out here is that society produces relationships and generates differences. If we think of Karl Marx, um, public health can help us explore and understand the underlying mechanisms that produce inequalities by being aware that society is based on differences and based on the competition between people. Perhaps public health could act in some way to reduce those inequalities, to reduce the negative consequences of this co competition and uh, these kind of conflicts between people. Then finally, society is also constructed out of multiple realities. So by knowing that society is a functionally differentiated system, you can see that each public health problem has multiple realities in terms when it comes to society. So there's an economic reality, there's a legal reality, an educational reality. There is perhaps many dimensions to each public health problem which could be explored and actually acted on uh, in some way in order to promote health. So that is takes us to the end of this uh, presentation or this set of presentations and I hope that we can have a good discussion in the uh, rest of the uh, time that we have for this particular aspect of the sociology of health and illness uh, and I'd like to thank you.